In this video, we'll review valence electrons in elements. So for our representative elements um, that share the same chemical properties based on the group they're in, they're categorized in those columns and groups based on the number of valence electrons they have. And the number of valence electrons is really dictating a lot of the properties of those elements. And here's why. Valence electrons are the electrons on the outside of the atom. They are the electrons that are in the outermost energy level. And within our atom, we have our nucleus, and then we have this big electron cloud. And within this electron cloud, some of our electrons are going to be more likely to be close to the nucleus, and others are going to be more likely to be further away. And the ones that are likely to be the furthest away on the outside of the atom, or the most likely to occupy space far away from the nucleus, are the ones that we call valence electrons. Um, and the group number from the periodic table will give you the number of valence electrons if you're using the version that says A after it. So for an element like potassium, which is found in our first column, 1A, it'll have a total of 19 electrons, most of which are gonna be found in this inner part of the atom. Uh, I'll give us a little nucleus like that. But one of them will, be the further, will have the ability to occupy space the furthest from the nucleus, and that will be our one valence electron. So looking at our periodic table, let's look at potassium. Let's find it. Here we go. Here's potassium. It's in our first column right here. And so that means all of the elements in this column or in this group have one valence electron. All of the ones in this column have two. And remember, we're just talking about our representative elements, so skip over your transition metals. And we come back here to our third column. These all have three, then four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, and so if you have a group number that states that the element is in the five, a column, and it'll usually be Roman numeral, this will mean it has five valence electrons. Let's look at another way if you like to count left to right instead. If we're trying to find selenium's right here, number of valence electrons, I would look at the row that it's in right here, the period on the periodic table, and I would count over for my representative elements. One, two, I would skip all of my transition metals, three, four, five, six. So I'll have six valence electrons in selenium. We can represent the number of valence electrons with electron dot symbols. This becomes extremely useful when we're trying to decide how different elements are bonded together and we're trying to predict the structure of that which we will spend time doing later on when we talk about covalent bonding. So to draw an electron dot symbol, first you need to determine the number of valence electrons that it has from the periodic table. And then you'll write the element symbol down. So if we were doing something like chlorine, I would write my element symbol. Now chlorine is in the same group as fluorine. So it will have seven valence electrons. And then I'm gonna place a dot around the element symbol on each face. So I'm gonna think about this element symbol as being in a square. And I'm gonna start anywhere, and I'm gonna put one electron. And then I'm gonna to come to the, go clockwise, and I'll put one on the next face, two electrons. Then continuing, three, four. After I have one electron on each side of my element symbol on all four sides, then I'll start pairing them up. So I need seven total. I have four around my chlorine right now. I'll come back here, five, six, seven. This is how we're basically gonna construct puzzle pieces for figuring out how things covalently bond. And the information I'm gonna be interested in is that I have 
three sets of electrons that are paired up, and I have one that is on its own and therefore likely to form a bond. Um, 